There we go. Now we've got this one here. Done that one on that side. This one here, the frame's a little bit bigger. This is probably a, an 8 by 10. Something like that. But this is all I'm going to do again. This is cool. it's good exercise. You can make a couple of bob out of it. And um, it's very, very good for your training. Training that brain's like going to the gym. And uh, building your muscles up. It's the same thing with the artist coming down and, paint, and painting planes here, you know. You want to be a value painter and play around with the pretty little lights and stuff. Or you want to be a shitty little painter like me and just paint a nice little painting. I don't know, it doesn't matter. There we go, anyhow, we'll do this smaller part, uh, not a painting, a little bit bigger than the other one, and uh, we'll just have to go and uh, watch this bloke with his motorbike, he just come in real loud, and it was just shitting everyone's the kid over there screaming. Was that bloody loud? He thinks he's a hero. Anyhow, um, I'm not going to get washed in with those people, I can piss off. Anyhow, I, um, I'm trying to... Uh, get this thing going. It's going to be similar to the other the other painting and uh, only a vertical and a little bit bigger. And it doesn't matter it, uh, what you're doing is uh, exercising. This is the whole thing. And the painting is still going to be a lovely little painting when it's finished. And um, you know, if you want to sell it, you sell it. If you want to hang it on your wall, you hang it on your wall. Um, it doesn't really matter, you know. It's just, they're all little exercises and they all work. You know. Like I say, you can go through them once, twice, three times, four times, uh, glaze them, you can do what you like with them, you know. Uh, it's magic. And anyhow, you'll find your own Not style. Gonna destroy the day. We're going to have a little tree coming out there, just like there is there actually, and then some bushes here. And then we're going to have our bushes. Cut out some of the sound there of the mad bikey that come through with his noisy bike. Went through on the tape, but anyhow, um, I'm going to wash in the sky, and uh, that'll be a little bit of um, ultramarine blue, sirloin blue mixed together, a little bit of titanium white, and I'll uh, wash around down to the top of the trees. Uh, when I get started, um, oh, here we go, we're starting. Yeah, so anyhow, I'm uh, taking that out of the frame, give me a bit more room to move around with my painting. Yeah, it's good to experiment with sky colours too, and bring them down into the, to the landscape itself too. Um, but th this, these particular ones, uh, there was no sky in, no sky colour in the in the photo. So I'm I'm just making blue, blue skies. You know, I could have made them real pale, like in the in the photo. But um, I think it's nice just to have a little bit of blue up there high and just pale it down a little bit as it hits the top of the trees. And. Uh, Yeah, that's it. Quite a simple little painting, and if you really have a bit of a think about it, you've got a couple of little lines there. You don't have to put a pencil mark on it, but I've just done it. Just to give me a basic idea where I'm going, you can hardly see it. And uh, I'll just wait uh, and, uh, and now I'll go, go through and do a bit of the trees. I don't know. I'll do a little bit of water. And then give that a bit of a splash around. And, um, because I'll be going over it with reflections and all that sort of stuff. So all I'm doing is sort of getting a bit of blue sky shadow colour in, in that area. And, um, yeah. Yeah. 
Mm. Get that foliage in. And that's just a mixture of uh, raw sienna with a bit of ultramarine blue. And I either put uh, magenta in there or even a bit of cat red. Who cares? You know, just either warm or curling it, you know, and I'm just and I'm just filling the spot. You know, I'm gonna come over with a whole pile of other colours as well, you know, so you're just building up a composition. The colour composition, that's what I call it. You know, this the the colours that I put in here will set the painting to it uh, in a direction to be finished, you know, like um, yeah, it'll, it gives me an idea of the colours I'm going to use uh, in the in the subject. I mean, I haven't gone with the with the colour even in the photo. You know, I mean, I've got to adjust things to uh, you know. I mean, uh, otherwise it's just going to be flat with the colours. You know, just a, a one-dimensional or two-dimensional form like the photo you know this I want to try you try and get you know in your painting you want to try and get that two three to three dimensional effect or whatever it is you know so but you know there's and this putting the darks in you know I've just gone through down the sky and now put in the darks and and uh, and I'll make them make them even dark that's that dries that'll dry a little bit lighter again and that'll need going dark but I'll carry them down I'll put the back here god I'm bloody yawning tonight and uh, but I wasn't going to put this on because it, uh, the radio the, the bike rider just goes through bloody about 20 10 minutes or 15 minutes of it but I'll just cut it all out and uh, I'll just re, re talk on the on the video you know I'm no super bloody person with those motor, with those uh, computers and things like that I'm just doing a painting and if people want to people want to look at them and get a little bit of inspiration out of it I'm a happy man you know like uh, you know I'm, I'm no no super duper painter that knows it all and got an answer for everything I'll tell you what I do have what I have is you put paint to canvas pencil to paper and uh, and uh, just keep practicing you know, we're painting on locations good too, you know, like, um, you know, it really is. But I'm, most of the time I've got an, I've got an outdoor gallery, so I'm painting out, outdoor gallery and studio. So, I mean, you know, sometimes I may not be painting a plains air painting, but the atmosphere of the air being outside while I'm painting helps to finish that painting rather than be stuck in a room, you know, in a home. It's all right in the winter time to be snugged up at home, but uh, you know, like you know, on nice days, and that you want to be out. And uh, yeah, so there you go. That's oh god, that's balancing out like the Beechworth Bakery, and I, I, you know, I'll go down there, and I'll be happy to put that on my trailer. And say it was, uh, you know, like it's a photo, a painting of a down there, but I don't have to tell them, uh, you know, uh, the painting itself. Uh, I won't have any problems if people want to know where the painting is. I mean, they'll know from the area where it's <coughs> where I sell it. <coughs> like most of my paintings on my easels, on my uh, trailer, they're actually paintings of spots. And um, you know everything's got a meaning. The painting's got a meaning of an area and a place. Um, you know it's uh, that connection between me and the land. Um, you can't get that. You can't get that unless you're working on the land. You know what I mean? You've got to be out there painting the land on the land, and you get that soul picture from uh, that soul feeling from the um, you know buddy the painting you know even on cloudy days you know with those fluffy clouds coming through and the light coming in and out this would be a perfect little spot here to be painting on a day like that because you get all the beautiful backlight and have different uh, trees as it's coming in forward to the foreground of the painting 
and, and you get, yeah, so it just gives you so much beautiful change to work with, and you don't get that with a photo. Um, you know, the photo doesn't give you that, that, that feeling, you know. You know, this is just raw sienna, magenta. Uh, I've got burnt, uh, a bit of burnt umber in this with a bit of ultramarine blue on that, and I'm just keeping it reasonably dark. I'm going to go over it with a bit of light colour, but um, just keep it a bit dark and a little bit thickish in the foreground there. Yeah, I like doing these little painting. Uh, it's such a, a good exercise. Yeah. I think I dropped my brush there. Picking up paint, no, picking up the paint, wiping the paint off the brush. And, uh, yeah, no, it's pretty quiet when I haven't got me outside, uh, me tape going on outside, you know, you got the outside sound. <coughs> I don't have that with it now, I'm just, just doing my painting, but anyhow, let's just show you this. You know, I'm not being too fussed with this tree, I'm not even copying the tree. Uh, in fact, I probably made this tree a little bit too busy in some places, probably. But it can still be changed and gone through, you know. I've got to come back through the sky, through the trees, build up the water and reflections, and then come back into the foreground of a painting. And, um, you know, it's, it's all those little clusters of colours and little tints and lights and darks that you put into your painting uh, you know, when you, as you're going along trying, uh, trying to finish it, you know, you've got all these little just adjustments of colour and lights and darks, texture, and uh, that's a lot of fun too. I find a lot of fun in that too, you know. Um, but like I was, uh, I think I mentioned on the other one about depression, I mean, this is magic magic stuff for me, it keeps me right, it keeps me, you know, out of 24 hours in a day, you know, my painting is, what, an hour and a half, maybe a couple of hours a day, but that, in that couple of hours, it takes my mind away from all, all the troublesome stuff that goes on in my life, going on in my life, and, um, and uh, yeah, it just gives you that little bit of a rest, so you can survive, you know. Um, and get you, yeah, get you out of the depression, you know. Uh, these little paintings allow you, uh, you don't have to fight with them. It's not like when, if you start getting too big, then you know, you've got to work your sky, and you work with bigger brushes, obviously, but, you know, you, you, there's more work, even though some people will say, oh, the little paintings are harder, Maybe they are, they are, uh, but uh, what they do is they help you finish the background in your paintings because, you know, you get smaller and uh, you've got to try and get a little bit of detail or, uh, you know, uh, uh, put a little bit of work in it to, to, to make it stand out, you know, and um, with a smaller painting. And uh, so it helps you with all the little tiny bits, you know. But it also, uh, you're not fighting. You're not fighting with the painting. And you see there, you're just wiping. I'm just wiping a little bit of paint here, a little bit there, and waiting, waiting for the painting to to hit me. You know, like um, you know, when I get that that bit of a magic feel, and when I put a stroke of paint on the canvas, um, I'll if I get that, I I leave that bit. You know, and um, you know. <coughs> it's marvellous what darks do too when you when you're putting a few darks around on your painting you know when your painting starts getting a bit bored you can have a few little darks here and there uh, and work through with the light to them you know and um, 
uh, yeah, it's just, you know, this is, um, you know how Van Gogh does his bloody flowers and things like that? This is how I paint my trees, you know, I, you know, people, everybody's got different ways of doing things, you know. Um, and, uh, so, yeah, anyhow, I'm, you know, I might even, um, a little bit of music. Can that stop there? How's that? Can we stop? got a bit of light in them, but that, that colour will change too, I'm just marking in what's uh, what's going on with the painting and um, putting a few little marks here and there, just trying to stimulate my brain a little bit, get me feel, get, get a feeling for the, for the spot. Yeah. The trunk itself will be pretty dark down the bottom and um, uh, you know it's got to have roots, that'll have exposed roots around there. There'll be a little bit of uh, uh, blue type of stony stuff uh, on the left hand side there in the foreground. Although I don't have to put that in, no, I don't. Have, you don't have to put everything um, that you see in the painting. You know, like um, you know, if it's a stony road or a stony track, you can. You don't really don't need that. You don't have to really put that in there. You know, but, um, you know when I let these dry and uh, go back over them in a day or two, um, you'll just see. How they grow and how how the light lifts them, you know. I'm just trying to show you a video here of a bit of a close up of the painting, but it's blurred out a little bit. And um, I'll see if I can get it to work um, properly. I'll pull it back a bit. And uh, but anyhow, <coughs> anyhow, that's my effort for the day. Oh, for a couple of hours, anyhow, you know. And um, and I'm happy where they are, those two paintings. And they'll be a, a nice little exercise to work through, uh, colour over the top of them. I go straight over the top of them with a bit more paint, 